I'm Bill Sinkford, and I'm privileged to serve as the president of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations. In 1967, at New York's Riverside Church, one of its former pastors is with us this evening, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King delivered an historic speech addressing the triple threats of racism, militarism, and poverty. The Beyond Vietnam speech, as it is often described, was a pivotal moment in Dr. King's growth from an American civil rights leader to a global human rights leader. The address also marked the start of the Poor People's Campaign that King was advancing when he was assassinated a year later in Memphis. The Poor People's Campaign was a milestone event in American history, but it was never concluded. It is heartbreaking to realize that today's minimum wage is lower in real dollars than the minimum wage in 1968, four decades ago, when King was fighting for the rights of working people. And while individual Americans of color have made incredible strides in the past 40 years, structural racism remains firmly entrenched. Many people were shocked when Hurricane Katrina exposed profound inequalities in New Orleans. But that was just one city, and the same is true as we know in everyone. Katrina gave America a painful lesson in the twin realities of racism and poverty, just as the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have taught us about the global and domestic consequences of both corporate greed and cultural imperialism. <coughs> Today, as we fight the triple threat, let us remember that the civil rights movement realized its greatest successes while the nation confronted an unpopular war, as we do today. And during the current economic uncertainties and anxieties, let us also remember that the federal minimum wage, minimum wage was not enacted during a time of plenty, but during the lean years of the Great Depression. Dr. King understood that we can't choose one just cause at the expense of another. We can't wait for a better time to do the right thing. He understood that the forces threatening peace, prosperity, and equality had to be fought simultaneously if there was to be any progress on any of them. Dr. King lived in difficult times, but he never, ever lost hope. And we need to sustain our hope as well to create our own stone of hope. I recall hearing those words, the stone of hope, from Dr. King as I sat in a crowded room at the UUA's General Assembly in Hollywood, Florida in June of 1966, listening to him deliver the Ware Lecture. Dr. King decried milita militarism, economic injustice, and the scourge of racism. He invoked the words of Jefferson and Lincoln a call for Americans to live up to the ideals on which this country was founded. Today, we, doc we honor his memory by renewing our own commitments to peace and justice. We have seen that there is a backlash every time the circle of equality is widened. But I view my stone of hope with these words. The moral arc of the universe is long, as Dr. King quoted 19th century Unitarian abolitionist Theodore Parker. The moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Dr. King's intellectual and spiritual evolution was driven by his growing understanding that forms of oppression are inextricably linked, made his insights and indeed his spirit be with us tonight and in the days ahead.